Welcome to the Nutra Medical Report first hour on Wednesdays. We have Harley Schlanger all the way from Australia from the LaRouche Foundation. The websites are LaRouchePAC.com, L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E-P-A-C.com, and LaRouchePUB.com. Amazing videos, updates, uh, and other material. LaRouchePUB.com, the Executive Intelligence Review. Excellent journal articles to analyze what's going on in the world. Uh, Harley, what's the latest happening in Europe? And uh, you mentioned something that's very shocking about the opposition party in Italy, I believe. And uh, tell us the story. I don't want to steal your thunder. What happened? Well, what's happening is that the European Union is going into their second phase of bailout, something called the European uh, monetary Stability Fund, or the European Monetary System, rather. They already have the so-called Financial Stability Fund, and they have pledged to put up a trillion euros in a bailout fund. Now, they tried to get the countries to accept selling bonds, and no one wanted to do that, because the question is, who ultimately is responsible for bonds issued by an entity which has no ability to create wealth? Right. You know, it's a, it's a complete fraud that the European Union would offer bonds for sale. And the Germans know that it means they would have to put up the money. So there was a huge fight around the second Greek bailout. And in order to get the agreement for the second Greek bailout, there were coups pulled in Greece and Italy to put in Greece this guy Papademos, who's an old Goldman Sachs hand, and in Italy Mario Monti. Oh, yeah. These are these are non-elected people. They are never served in the parliament. They don't belong to any party. They represent the European Union dictatorship, and they in in uh, Greece they went with massive austerity, uh, but they still have to sell the bonds, and they can't get the money in the fund. So they came up with an idea which they call the fiscal package, which is a government has to sign. All governments that are part of the EU have to agree that they will cut their debt down to below 3% of GDP within, I think it's by 2015, which is impossible because these countries are now contracting. Their economies are contracting. Well, in other words, if the economy contracts, you have to add that percentage to the contraction. So let's say the economy right. contracts. So if it contracts, so, <clears throat> even if they cut spending, where are they going to get the money for the spending they do? Right, because you and don't so, have the, you don't have the new they're sources. They're not allowed to borrow, and they're not allowed to spend they're going to start killing their populations. And so what's happened is that there's a, a new party that was formed in Greece out of members of the, who are kicked out of the other parties. Uh, I think Greece is heading towards something that's going to be ungovernable. In Italy, what's interesting is that the leading opposition party is called the Northern League. It's based in Milan. It's, I think, the third largest party in the country. And... They work closely with uh, Giulio Tremonti, the former economics minister, who has praised LaRouche's economic ideas uh, over and over and over. And the, the Northern League announced last Saturday they were going to carry out a campaign to get Glass-Steagall through in Italy, and that that would be used in Italy to put the banks through bankruptcy reorganization the way LaRouche has proposed. <coughs> so that happened on Saturday. Monday night... The Carabinieri, the Italian special police force, and the financial police raided the offices of the Northern League, uh, arrested the treasurer, and went into the homes of about 20 leading members, including a guy named Umberto Bossi, who's the uh, chairman of the party. Now, this is a party that's been having LaRouche people speak at their conferences. In fact, I'm not too far away from uh, Como, Italy, where there's going to be a conference in a couple of weeks, and I've been invited to speak there. So Monti, on being the president of Italy, the former Goldman Sachs man, has put out the order to shut down this party. Now, this is exactly what you and I have been talking about, that they're right. going to have to resort to Hitler-style secret police tactics to shut down the opposition, because... Greece, if Greece defaulted, it would hurt the British banks and hurt the French banks and some German banks, but it would be a small dent. If Italy defaulted, it would blow out the banks of Europe. If Spain defaults, it would blow out the banks of Europe. If Portugal and Ireland together were to default, it would blow out Europe. Now, at this point, the only uh, consistent source of funds to the European Financial Stability Fund 
is the good old U.S. Federal Reserve. And so what we're not being told when Obama is saying they're getting their house in order in Europe is that they're doing it the same way we got our house in order here, which is bailouts, which really don't get your house in order. And so we're seeing the collapse in the transatlantic system, and we're seeing the resort to dictatorial measures against the opposition. Yeah, exactly. That's the latest in Europe. Now, in Germany, there's a huge debate going on as to whether this whole thing is constitutional or not. It's going to go before the constitutional court. I don't know what will happen. The constitutional court has punted on three other issues recently. Maybe they'll punt again. Uh, But we also have this interesting potential from the U.S. Supreme Court to get rid of Obamacare. And you have President Obama, a constitutional law professor, so-called, saying that the Supreme Court can't override or shouldn't override an act of Congress. Well, that's what the Supreme Court's job is, to determine whether Congress is passing legislation which is constitutional or not. Exactly, yeah. And the fact is that if the Supreme Court doesn't overrule this bill, which is clearly unconstitutional, what will probably happen is that they will set up committees and start defrocking Supreme Court justices for doing unconstitutional things like uh, uh, the recent comments by one of the Supreme Court justices that the Constitution shouldn't be a basis for a foreign country setting up their own Constitution. The uh, huh. Ginsburg comments. So the fact well, is, you also we're... heard what Kennedy agreed on. Uh, he joined the four so-called conservatives, saying that you can be subject to strip search, no matter what your offense is, if you're going to be in the general prison population. Yeah, right. That, and that's so, by the way, that was just passed, wasn't it? That that, that was judgment. just last week. So you know, people who are hoping the Supreme Court will do the right thing. I mean, maybe they will on Obamacare, maybe not. But, again, we have to change the Congress and we have to get Obama out because that's where the problem really is. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? If we don't get Obama out and people don't realize, they think, well, he's only part of the problem. No, no, he's the central nidus. He's like the primary tumor. He's the pivot on which the whole problem uh, revolves. That having a certified British agent in the White House makes it impossible to do what's necessary because of the power of the presidency to threaten, to blackmail, uh, the power of money. Look, you know, Obama is going to have three quarters of a billion dollars to spend on his presidential campaign. There are local Democratic Party offices all over the country that will only get money if Obama allocates it to them. So do you think they're going to tolerate anyone opposing Obama? They've got no. this kind of dictatorial control, and that's why there's a, a tax on Keisha Rogers and Diane Sayre and our other candidates uh, coming from the Democratic Party establishment. It's coming well, from Obama. A, they had a, a joke uh, in the North County News here, a, a comic article that said, you know, it showed Santorum, said, well, I lost Wisconsin because I was outspent three to one. Uh, wait till I'm fighting Obama and I'm outspent 50 to one. <laughs> That's not bad. No, yeah. Look, Obama's, you know, they say Obama's not getting Wall Street money. That's a lot of nonsense. He's oh, getting that's bundlers. Ridiculous. He's getting illegal money from all different sources. And the Federal Election Commission won't even investigate the 2008 funds. You know, in 2008, there are something like 50,000 so called individual contributions that have been challenged to Obama because they can't find the, the person at the address that's listed. That's called fraud. That could be a $250,000 fine for each one of those. So if the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, were doing its job, George Soros would be in prison, a lot of Wall Street bankers would be in prison, and Obama would have been impeached. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? Well, let's see. At least not not today. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, you can always fight for Hopefully it. Hopefully, Judge our uh, Sheriff Arpaio and uh, his posse are going to run down this criminal. Report and Harley Schlanger. Harley, there's a lot of really um, hard to kind of believe issues that are going on in this world. 
<laughs> well, let's go through some more of the ones that we we have put on the agenda to talk about today. Well, I think the we still have to keep our eye on what's happening around Syria and Iran, because it's the case now that the only people who want to intervene in Syria are the Saudis, the Qataris, and the Brits and the Obama administration. The Russians and the Chinese essentially combine forces with the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff and uh, the uh, Nouri al-Maliki, the Iraqi Prime Minister, said, why would you want to support people who are part of Iraqi al-Qaeda? In fact, it, it amplifies the problem in Iraq. If you support the same people that he's fighting uh, in his own country to keep Iraq together, it's and just I, counterproductive. I have to say, Hillary Clinton did a disgusting thing with this Turkey meeting, where she went into Turkey and, and she fully embraced the so-called Syrian National Council. Yeah, which isn't is that one ridiculous? Of these fraudulent things like the uh, Shalabi group in Iraq who are the ones who put out the lies on weapons of mass destruction. Uh, by the way, did you see this? The, the guy who was the original sole source on the so-called biological weapons plants on mobile units in the Iraqi desert, this guy named, who was codenamed Curveball, on British television, I, I think it's tomorrow night, is going to admit that he made the whole thing up. Doesn't surprise me. Isn't well, that terrible? this story has been out for a while. Well, he's but, just a, a sounding board that the uh, special MI5, MI6, CIA pulls out of their behind, along with the Mossad, whenever it's uh, convenient to create a dialectic so they can create war. Yeah, so they can come up with someone who they say is uh, an insider who has intelligence, like Ahmed Shalabi, who was the guy who was the K Street lobbyist for the Iraqi opposition, who essentially is responsible for the lying intelligence, which was used by Cheney and Wolfowitz and others to send 4,000 Americans to their deaths. And for what? Because Iraq is now more of a failed state than it was under Saddam Hussein. Afghanistan is more of a failed state now under Karzai in terms of the ability for terrorists to, to operate. We've practically turned Pakistan into an enemy with what we've done in Pakistan. And so in this context, Hillary Clinton going into this conference in Istanbul, embracing the Syrian National Council, agreeing with the Saudis. And the Saudis are saying Saddam, or I'm sorry, uh, Assad must be removed if necessary at the end of a rope. And so what is the Saudi interest in this? They are Sunni extremists. The Al-Qaeda organization was a Sunni extremist organization. It was created by, as you say, MI5 and the CIA to be deployed in Afghanistan when the Soviet Union was there in the 1980s. Bin Laden comes from an extremely wealthy Saudi family. His father ran the construction company that built most of the hotels and the fancy buildings for the sheikhs there. And also, uh, Bin Laden, I, I, a.k.a. Tim Osman, was the actual senior engineer on the project for the largest air force built outside the United States in the world in history in, in north of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, uh, yeah. with these billions of dollars. It was the $55 billion U.S. Air Force base built outside of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. People don't understand what's really going on here. No, and so you have a, a British... Saudi, and then in the U.S. it's tied into Bush, it's tied into Halliburton, it's tied into the Blackstone Group and some of these others. And these are the people who are committed to destroying the United States through a series of long and so-called little wars. This is the oldest strategy of the British Empire. If you think about what Vietnam was, you know, John Kennedy did not want to go in. He was killed. And we were in Vietnam for 10 years. We lost, what, 55,000 people. We had uh, a whole generation, a whole section of a generation was traumatized and destroyed by what happened in Vietnam and how the Vietnam War was used to destroy the generations that wouldn't fight. Now we've had, since 1990, almost consistent warfare between 
uh, Iraq and Kuwait, the Bosnian quagmire, and now Afghanistan and, and Iraq and possibly Syria and Iran. You bleed a nation dry, and this is what's happening. And so the fact that Obama sent Hillary in and, you know, Hillary for a while was actually trying to counter some of this stuff. Now she's just, maybe she's just worn out. Maybe there are threats against her family. But she's totally on this British line right now, which is to provide military support for what are essentially Libyan and Iraqi al-Qaeda terrorists who are trying to bring down the government of Syria. Well, what's amazing is we even have local... Uh, leaders of nations like Iraq that realize that what you're trying to do in Syria is the exact opposite of what we need help to do in Iraq to keep stability in the country and stop civil war from happening there, too. Exactly. And then you have one other factor involved, which is that if you, when, when you start peeling back the layers of who actually is benefiting from this, what's Ebola. happening with oil prices? Uh-huh. You know, it's not yeah. just that Iran might shut down the Strait of Hormuz. The, the U.S. military is saying the Iranian Navy is going out of its way to coordinate with us to make sure there are no accidents in the Strait of Hormuz. Exactly. It's the Saudis and the speculators who are driving the price of oil up. Right. Well, they want to make more money, and there's nothing better. And then they use that money to fund people who are fighting to destroy nations, including our own. Now, in Syria... Uh, the military of Assad has temporarily quelled the revolt. The population is still supporting Assad for the most part. And so it looks as though the whole post Gaddafi gambit of, of blowing up Syria has fallen short. Now, they still may do something. Who knows what, what they're going to do? The Saudis are offering $50,000 for everyone who goes over and becomes a fighter in the Syrian National Council. Uh, but the Iran situation is still hot. The biggest problem is Netanyahu and the fact that Obama has given the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu a green light. Uh, The Israelis may wait till after the election. They may not. Nobody really knows. But the the word came out of Israel this week on Ynet, which is a, a news service close to the Netanyahu administration, said that the only people involved in the decision to launch an attack would be Ehud Barak, the defense minister, and Netanyahu, the prime minister, both of whom want a strike on Iran. Well, let's uh, dissect exactly how likely this is. Number one, if Israel tries to do a preemptive strike, they'll have hundreds of thousands of conventional missiles that can go 200 miles, landing on the territory with fuel air bombs, which are equivalent to a nuclear explosion, even if they don't have nukes, biological and chemical weapons, and they have the... uh, Farage 5 that can actually be pinpoint targeted, not the bottle rockets they're shooting up right now. And uh, so Israel, if they try to start a war, with or without the U.S., will be decimated. The only way they can do it otherwise is to take out the missiles in Lebanon and Syria. That means a full force invasion. That's the only way to do it. Report and uh, yeah, Harley. Uh, as I mentioned just before the break, the only way that they can actually take out these missiles, the reason why Syria has two hundred thousand missiles, not only there but north of the Latani River in Lebanon, in it's impossible for the Israelis to do an invasion force to go in there and take them out. They learned that in the last uh, Lebanese-Israeli uh, war a few years ago. Yeah, when and, they attacked Hezbollah. Right. And uh, you see, unless Israel is crazy enough to use nuclear weapons. They're, going, they're up against two problems. One is if, if you are fighting someone who has nothing to lose, like Hezbollah represents a lot of poor Shiite Muslims in southern Lebanon. And Hezbollah is popular because they provide medicine, they provide schools, they provide food. And so they have an infrastructure that if the Israelis attack it, people will die to defend it including suicide bombings, including... Yeah, there's, that, uh, there's no defense against uh, uh, 200,000 missiles coming in from Syria and Lebanon on the Israeli population, and the 40 missiles shut down the southern part of the country. So, you know, firstly, the sanctions have never worked in history, number one. Number two, 
this idea of these this ridiculous statements by what I call the witch of the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. I don't think she's any wonderful person either. Hillary Clinton is walking lockstep with that devil in the White House, Obama. And what they're doing is they're pushing us to a point where we're very likely going to have a war right before the election or shortly thereafter. And if Sheriff Arpaio and his group manage to start really pulling this chain by taking them off the voter roll in, in Arizona and you get a domino effect in other states, I wouldn't doubt that the red phone will ring from Obama calling Netanyahu who says, it's time to drop the bombs. And you I, know, I really, they, they may be sending drones against the sheriff in Arizona. Look, well, I mean, what, they, what we're dealing with with Obama is someone who's clearly insane. Oh, yeah. And his speech... The He's insane day, and evil. He's, He's both. One of, the, one of our biggest problems is we, we like to call it insane because it's almost more acceptable to think someone's just crazy and psychotic. How about he's malevolently evil? The man is so evil right down to his bone marrow. We, and the same with Hillary Clinton. We don't want to call him evil. We want to just call him crazy. Yeah, they're crazy because they're not like a normal person. They're soulless monsters. But the well, fact and in is... in the case of <clears throat> Obama and Netanyahu, I think if we take the two of them as case studies, uh, they are put in the position they're in because they are soulless and because they're puppets. Right. They're willing to do for their own... Uh, glorification acts that are essentially suicidal for the nations they govern. Oh yeah, they in most of the population, forty missiles. Imagine forty bottle rockets, the least of the missiles that the that the Gaza Strip could shoot. Bottle rockets shut down the southern part of the country. What happens when real advanced Farage five missiles coming in with biological chemical weapons? And by the way, the Syrian and Iranian biological and chemical weapons facilities are top notch. They're not third rate. They're top-notch. The same with fuel air bombs. They've been doing advanced work on this. And they also, by the way, all they, the people don't realize they have Cobalt-60 sticky bombs, which basically is a bomb with, with glue. And when the Cobalt-60 sticks, you cannot decontaminate people or things with it because when these explode, they're non-decontaminatable, period. And the Cobalt-60 particles, when it gets to you, you're dead. And everybody you touch and gets near you, they also die. So the fact is, if the Israelis start this, Israel will be a decimation zone. Well, and you have to realize, and this is something you and I have discussed on a couple of occasions, but most Americans don't think about this because they, they've been so manipulated around the idea of Arab terrorism. And what they're really, you, you have a terrorism which really is not any uh, religion or any uh, nation that controls it. It's an anti-human satanic force. You can find people in any society who, driven to an extreme, will commit acts of violence against themselves and others. Yeah. And, and, well, and we can we can not say we can't absolve the Arab states around them either. When you have three-year-old little boys in Palestine giving their birthday party with little bomblets on, and they train these boys to say it'll be wonderful when you die killing. Uh, you know, Israelis and blowing them up and so on. Well, but again, you know, I, I would say we, we aren't really, if you take a look at the what's going on in the United States with some of the mass murders that are taking place, when you have three and four and five year old Americans playing these violent video games, it's not so different from what, what the Palestinians do with the little bomblets and things. I mean, it's partly a breakdown of the culture. Well, yeah, well it's also as part of the very nature of Islam itself especially the extreme elements in these countries it breeds it uh, well, that's and why then and then you have the uh, then you have the wahhabism the uh, right the wahhabism uh, and then you also have that all funded by the saudis and the british uh, which created wahhabism i mean it wasn't yeah. there before and now you amplify it with the israelis which basically see no way of protecting themselves except going in there and quote uh, tit for tat you know basically we'll bring in our helicopter gunships and we'll hit areas and even if it kids, kills little girls in yeah. their schoolyard well, you know, in the, Palestine, uh, it's, it's, that's what happens. It's just worth looking at this Wahhabism question for a minute, because this is, again, something people don't understand. You had two different tendencies in Islam uh, in the Middle Ages. You, you did have a platonic current. You had a, people who were studying Greek philosophy. This was the Baghdad Caliphate. This was in Persia, uh, Al-Farabi and Ibn Sina. Very advanced... Uh, scholars. You had the library in Alexandria, Egypt, which had all the works that had been destroyed in Europe. 
of the ancient Greeks, Eratosthenes' scientific experiments, Plato's writings, and Archimedes, and so on. Now, at the same time, you had an oligarchical principle in the Arab world, which used Islam as a war against modernism, what, what today sometimes people call jihad, was launched by a, a fanatic named al-Ghazali, who said that any sign of uh, wealth on the earth is a violation of, of uh, Islam, and therefore you have to destroy science, you have to destroy uh, the Baghdad Caliphate, which was uh, a very wise ruler in Baghdad who was making uh, agreements with Charlemagne in, in the ninth century. So you had this, these two tendencies, and the Al-Ghazali current is what was used to create Wahhabism. You had an extremely backward tribe, the tribe of Ibn Saud, and the British sent in several people, including H.A.R. Philby, whose son was oh, the yeah. famous triple agent Kim Philby. Kim, yeah. Uh, St. John, H.A.R. St. John Philby was sent in to infiltrate the Saud family. He became part of the family, and he basically brought to them an artificial religion that had been cooked up in the middle of the 19th century uh, in a place called the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. This is the place where the uh, Rosicrucian Freemasonry started. And it's a place where they dabble in all kinds of occult and esoteric philosophies. And then they send it out. They bring people in who are princes from these backward countries and, and give them this religion. And so Wahhabism, which was a very small grouping in the 19th century in uh, the Arabian Peninsula, was chosen as the force that would take over the, the Arabian Peninsula after World War I when the Turks were driven out. You had the British on both sides in the Arabian Peninsula. On the one side, they had Lawrence of Arabia fighting to defend the, the Hashemite family, which now is the king of Jordan. Uh, but they used to be the sheriff of Mecca and Medina, the two holy cities of Islam. The British moved them out. They said, so sorry, chaps, but we're taking over. They'd been there since 700. They were have relatives of the Prophet Muhammad, and all of a sudden they were told they have to leave because the Saud family is going to take over the Arabian Peninsula, and it became Saudi Arabia. And this is a dynasty which is totally backward, and this is our big ally in the Middle East. Wonderful, isn't it? Oh, That's yeah. stu stupidity on steroids. We'll be back in a moment with more. of interesting topics uh, I want to kind of a couple a couple of ones here that I think uh, uh, we have a, a little difference in uh, in opinion but I think it's something that's really important because it's something that's really coming up uh, here very quick uh, Obama's latest moves and the moves by uh, Hillary Clinton has been very much to get in the face of China yeah. and uh, uh, you know, we have a difference of opinion because from your sources you think that the Chinese don't have a plan to invasion, but in a sense they've already invaded Mexico. All of the 100 series highways, all the ports, including Freeport, Bahama, and the port that was given by a previous president, uh, Long Beach, California, these ports basically in full entry. We now have 250-some planned uh, trade zones, which are sovereign Chinese territory inside America, including 50 square miles in Idaho. These are not a theory. The fact is the Chinese do have a long-term plan. They have multiple plans. The Chinese are not stupid. They're going to have a plan to cooperate with us, a plan to do this and that, and then also a plan to invade. And uh, not that they you know, would heed the words of the, Chinese, of the Japanese emperor in the Second World War that every behind every blade of grass would be an American with a gun. Uh, but the fact is they want to buy California, not bomb it. But well, the fact is... is uh, look, the, the important thing on China, where we agree 
is that if the Chinese have anything they have to deal with, it's not invading America. It's their own demographic problem. And the well, when you create 10 million uh, new uh, workers per year and 2 million jobs, you got a big social problem that's going to blow up. They've got a very big social problem. And even if they continued to take up outsourced U.S. Uh, jobs, that's, that's slowed down to a trickle. And secondly, the Chinese people are now starting to make demands for social improvement. And so the Chinese are caught between a situation where they had a large influx of cash over the last 20 years based on NAFTA and, and the World Trade Organization and the deindustrialization of the United States, where they took advantage of that and made a lot of money. And they were somewhat shrewd at the time. The best investments they could make were in, in loaning the money back to the United States. So in that sense... They are the largest holder of U.S. Treasury notes. Yeah, but the thing is they haven't paid off all of their personal debt. We've had experts on talking about that, where they have debt going back to the, uh, the before the communist era uh, that they still owe, which is, would more than match the debt that they still hold in so-called Treasury notes, and they refuse to pay it. Well, and they're, they're not going to pay it because their basic argument is that that was an imperial government and that they're now a different government and all. they don't owe it. Yeah. Every but nation on earth has had that rule outside. forever, and, and, and the fact is the Chinese want all our intellectual property. They want to move Boeing Aerospace to China. They want to, they're stealing at such a rate, the Chinese, that the current world numbers I have from Canada are $20 billion per month, just in industrial espionage in Canada alone, not including the United States. It's just ridiculous what's going on. China is a pariah on the well, world. And China country. has, they, they have this problem that, that we both know, which is, what do you do with a population that is growing and is making demands and a government can't keep up with it? Now, there's, there's a grouping in China which has studied the American system. And what they're trying to do is use the treasury notes they have and using some of the other capital they have, use that to generate internal credit to develop internal markets. And that's why they've been so freaked out about the inflation there because they started creating credit for people to buy cars and houses and things of that sort, and it started an inflation. So the other side of this is that they're investing in technologies, including space, high-speed rail, things of that sort, which actually we should be doing as well. Well, New what they do, and I can plant. tell you what they do, because I have some inside information. Bombardier Corporation, which developed the most advanced high-speed rail, so what yeah. the Chinese did is put battalions of their engineers on it. After right. getting contracts with our technology, which they stole, they upgraded it and said, now it's ours. That's and right. so they've increased the rate of the trains going another 40 miles per hour, and now the Chinese are making new train systems all over the world. Uh, they want to have contracts to come here to America. In fact, they've tried to approach uh, California. They're trying to do that. They even offered to, to pay for some of the... Uh high-speed rail system from San Diego up to San Francisco. Exactly, and they want the Chinese to put it in. People don't understand what China's all about. They want, no, they, they steal they, the technology, the they graduate the more engineers they in pay. China, they graduate more engineers in China per year than all our engineers and our PhDs in North America just in Beijing. We're not talking about and, Shenzhen, and Chengdao, itself, or any of these other places. That in itself is smart for a nation to develop. Now, the second thing they're doing is that they're using these technologies, they're offering to work with Russia to help develop Siberia, to work with uh, uh, South Korea, to work with other countries. And the, the, again, the problem they have is that if they have too high a rate of inflation, if they overheat, then their currency is going to collapse and they're going to have a social explosion. If they don't create jobs and they don't create an internal market, they'll have a social explosion. And you probably know they just had this uh, guy ousted, this party leader, Bo, who essentially was collaborating with certain networks of, of MI6 to bring back a kind of Maoist grouping into the leadership of China. And this was an open Maoist group, Bo Jilao. So he yeah. was just purged. So they, but what this means is that there are people in the younger elements of the Chinese leadership who do have this expansionist view that you're talking about. I, I, 
it would be foolish to ignore that. Yeah, the fact the hand, view is that there are elements that are in the military, and they tell them this. In fact, my sister was a translator and a journalist at the Hong Kong Daily News for years. Her husband was from Shenzhen. And I can tell you that the Chinese have elements within their military that firmly believe that, quote, your bride is in America. They actually say this to them. They know they've got forward placement military operations in Mexico and the Guatemalan Mexican border and in Venezuela. And it's stupid. It's almost done as a show play to tell them, look how great China is. Like, look, if China started any kind of conflict with America now or in the next two decades, they'd be decimated so fast. It would be unbelievable. The Chinese military just came out and said China has two problems if they did go to war. One is they have a no first use pledge, which you know, they could always get rid of. But secondly, they do not have a huge nuclear arsenal. They have not built it up yet. Now, it's something that they might build up. Well, we don't have verification of that. I know what I've heard is that the Chinese have been doing a lot more underground testing than they admit, and we have no very way of verification either Russia or China in terms of their nuclear forces with Obama plans to do a 90% reduction in our nuclear forces without verification. Well, Ronald Obama Reagan would agree to that. That's a big problem, but the, the point I'm making is that you do have people in China who would be willing, if we had a sane president and yeah. a decent, productive economy, and use that as our forward engine of diplomacy, we could go to China, we could go to Russia, and we'd find co-thinkers who would say, let's work together, together to develop these capabilities. That's what LaRouche has been proposing, that's what our candidate slate is proposing, and instead, you have Obama and Hillary Clinton, and also Romney, the same thing, threatening China, threatening Russia, threatening to go to war in Syria, threatening to go to war against Iran, when we've exhausted our military and we're bankrupt. And this is the, you know, well, yeah. if you want to look at things, if, if any other country is smart, let the United States continue another 20 years on this track and we'll disappear as a nation. Well, here's what I think is going to happen. I think they've decided that in the next, this year and next, they want to collapse the economy of the world so, so thoroughly they move toward a world biometric currency because they can just create more zeros when well, they run into zeros. And what the British are doing right now with continuing the bailouts in the EU and continuing the bailout regime in the United States is they are destroying, they're destroying the euro and they're destroying the dollar. Yeah, but it's all by design. They, they want to create a world collapse so they can have a new financial order where all the old debts just disappear as a, as a vapor in the morning and now all of a sudden everybody has a biometric currency and everything is electronic divots in their system and well, they forced and Russia that, and China but into but the a system. a large number of people are going to die because food supplies are contracting and, and medicine is being destroyed. The medical well, profession is being destroyed. Well, look at what's happened with Obamacare. 150,000 doctors are going to quit uh, within four to five years of retirement. That's from the American Murder Association, I call them, the AMA. Their numbers say 150,000. We'll be short up to 250,000 doctors in the country alone, not alone including nurses and technicians and others. And clinics and hospitals will have to close because they won't be able to continue running. And no matter who's running this government, if they keep running the economy the way that they do in well, this we, nation. We've got to get Obama out. That's the key. Yeah, and also we don't want to have an Obama exchange. We don't want to have Obamni, i.e. Ra yeah. Romney, with similar policies, who's a, I call him Flip Hananiah Romney. Amazing. Back next week uh, with Harley Schlanger. Great update to Harley. Uh, we'll uh, have a great uh, evening. And hour three coming up with Bob Chapman, Ted Anderson. You don't want to miss it.